Pastor Randy Bonds is going to come, and uh, he's going to give the message today. So why don't you give him a hand as he comes. Is this thing on? Yes. Oh, it is, awesome. yeah. I think it's amazing that God speaks to Nick and all you guys and me because... I'm listening to Nick going, oh, we were listening to the same guy. <laughs> Heavenly Father, just right now we want you to come into this place and your word to come through everything that's being said and done in every action and every little syllable, everything, God, we want you God, help me to step back so that you can step forward. God, open the ears of the people to hear your word and to know what you want them to do. And bless them now in Jesus' name, amen. For some reason, I got a little bit stuffed up this morning. I'm really getting tired of that, but we're going to talk about that a little bit too. Yeah, it's going around. It's one of life's little disappointments. <laughs> so, now I was talking to a couple of guys before church, and God was talking to me about this on the way here today, is that we're all in the military. We're all in God's army. Every one of us. You know, we were talking back there about some of the positions we held in there. Some of us were cooks. Some of us were military police. Some of just infantry. Some of us were in a long time. Some of us not. I got out as soon as I could. Because the military can be messed up. <laughs> but we were all there for one purpose. And that was to put forth the goal that the President of the U.S. told us to do. Now, this isn't in my notes. This is extra that God gave me on the way here. Hopefully, it'll fit. My notes may just go in the garbage. But that's all right, because I want God to speak through me to you. Because if we don't do that, we're not telling us what our commanders, they're booby-trapping me. I think Janice puts those up here just to trip us up. <laughs> Actually, she does it so that I don't go out of the camera range. Because <laughs> I forget the cameras there. I wore one for years in my profession as law enforcement, and I just forget they're on because I don't care. But, you know, we're in the military, and when you go in the military, you get basic training. Everybody... No matter if you're that cook, the military police, the infantry guy, maybe you're the mechanic that fixes all the vehicles. When I was in, it was Jeeps. And I actually liked them better than the Humvees. Humvees broke. Jeeps, you just, if you tipped them over, you set them right, they smoked a little bit and you drove on. <laughs> yes, I did that. <laughs> but... You get that basic training. Well, God gives us that basic training too. It's in the Word. You know, Nick was talking about how a lot of us don't know the Word good enough. When you go through basic training in the military, by the time you get out, you know what you're supposed to do. You know the basics. So we need to get into that. So... When you get into battle, I was never in battle. I was one of the lucky ones that all my time was peacetime. And I think God orchestrated that because it was hard enough. And I was in the National Guard, so I only had to do it once. There's a lie that they tell you. They say it's only once a month and only two weeks in the summer. That is a lie. It's 
three or four days every month and three to four weeks in the summer because they stick everything together. So they don't tell you the truth. But, you know, even in the peacetime stuff, we would go out on maneuvers and we'd be given the equipment because in the military they give you the basic equipment. Well, God gives us the basic equipment too. It's in Ephesians. And we're going to talk about a couple of those pieces today. But You get that basic equipment, and then you go out there. And when you're out in the field, when you're out doing the stuff you're supposed to be doing as part of God's army, which every one of us is part of God's army, and what's the mission he's given us? What did Jesus say? Yeah, go out and tell people about Jesus. You spread the gospel. The word says that every one of us is supposed to go out and tell people about Jesus, tell them how to be saved, and then we'll see healings and people raised from the dead, the basic stuff. Yeah, being raised from the dead is basic. It's right in the word. Check me out. I encourage you to check anything I tell you out. And if I'm wrong, come to me and tell me and we'll look at it. And if I'm wrong, I will admit it. Because I am not perfect. Some of you know that. <laughs> Quiet, Dina. <laughs> so, when you're out in battle, you get all this base equipment. And it, now I, God, I can't remember how much it weighed, but it was heavy. And even though we got to drive Jeeps as military police, we also had to do what they called humping it. You put it on your back, and it's there's a big hump, that big pack. And some of you guys that have been there know how heavy that thing gets quickly. Because you get, and you get weary. But you, you're building up those muscles. That's what they do in basics. First thing they do is push-ups. Lots of them. I still owe my drill sergeant push-ups. He's never getting them. But you build up your body and your mind, and that's, that's what we do in God's Word, too. We have to build that up. But when we get out there, you know, you're fighting, you're, you're moving, you're fighting the enemy because the enemy's always attacking you. That's their job. Well, Satan's always attacking us. He's our enemy. I don't know if it's his job, but that definitely is what he does. He even attacked Jesus. So what I want to talk today about is what it takes to be an overcomer in those situations. What it takes to win. Because that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be winning. We are winners, overcomers. You know, that's not what the enemy tells you though. So when you get weary, because we're going to get weary in this battle. No matter how strong you think you are, you get weary. You keep fighting against, you, go, you feel like you're going uphill the whole time. And when you do that, I, I used to watch the guys and myself. You'd start getting tired. There was one time that my squad, we didn't get asleep for a week. Every time would be our downtime, they'd say, okay, we're moving. Didn't get to sleep for a week. I was weary. And when I would get weary, I tend to let my mouth override my brain. <laughs> Ask Dina. <laughs> I get grumpy when I get tired and weary. Maybe that's how you are when... You, know, you get weary of fighting the enemy, Satan. And you, get, you start losing heart. You think, this is never going to end. I'm never getting to the top of this hill. I'm never taking out this enemy's position. I'm never getting to where I need to be. Because you're tired. And you know, we need to have faith. God put faith in us. He put faith that we are getting to the end. 
that we're going to finish the race, as it says, some of the songs, even in the Word. And when we finish the race, what's at the goal line? What's at that finish line? Jesus. We get to be with Him for ever. That's a pretty good reward. So let's look at Luke. I'm going to my notes, just so you know. Let's look at Luke eight twenty-two and twenty-five through twenty-five. There you go. This is all in the English Standard Version, so whatever version you like, I'm okay with. One day he got into the boat with his disciples and he said to them, Let us go across the other side of the lake. And they set out, and as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came up. Let's read that the right way. And a windstorm came down on the lake. They were filling up with water. And they were in danger. Now, you guys are on the coast, so you all know boats. When the waves get high and the wind starts blowing you around, that bilge pump may not be good enough. Your boat starts to fill up. Well, when your boat fills up with water, it's not a good thing. Because when the boat fills up with water, it goes to the bottom. And you can't breathe down there. I can't. It says, and they went and they woke him up saying, Master, Master, we're perishing. And he awoke and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. And they ceased and there was a calm. And he said to them, where is your faith? And they were afraid and they marveled, saying to one another, who is this then? Who then is this? That he commands even the winds and the water and they obey him. So what we see there is Jesus demonstrating that he had the power and the authority over every situation in life. You know, you may feel like in your life you're, you're in that boat and the waves are coming over the side. And, you know, I, I used to, when I lived in Alaska, we didn't have these nice electric bilge pumps. We had five-gallon buckets. And there was one time where little 14-foot boat, we were out salmon netting, and I'm the only one in the boat, by the way, so can't blame it on anybody but me. We decided we're going to go on the beach and eat. Randy forgot that there's a wave that comes behind you. When your bow hits the beach, the water comes in. That much freeboard, if that. Five-gallon bucket. I thought it was going to sink because even at the beach, it was deep enough I would not have swam because I had on hip boots and rain gear. And you can't swim. It's like anchors on your feet. But Randy started bailing. That boat didn't sink. The guys, you know what the guys on the beach did? Look at that. One was my brother, another was a couple of friends, and I'm going, yeah, you guys are. <laughs> I wasn't a Christian then, and I had some words for them. <laughs> that I'm not, yeah. So I was demonstrating that I could get that boat bailed out. But if I'd been in a storm like they're talking about here, I can understand where these guys came from. They weren't bailing that boat out. It was going to sink. But Jesus, he took charge. And he he asked them, where was their faith? Where's your faith today? You know, we, we got in this world, Nick was talking about a little bit. And I agree with him. I think something soon is going to happen that we're not going to, it's not going to be good. But We're God's soldiers. We're in God's army. We already won. It's just the enemy forgets that. 
So we're going to get discouraged, guaranteed. But where do we go? Where's our faith? These guys got discouraged. All the disciples thought they were going to sink. Jesus wasn't discouraged. He was in the bow of the boat. I don't know why he's in the bow. That kind of bounces, but sleeping because he wasn't worried at all because he had faith. When we put our trust in Jesus and our faith in Jesus, he gives us that authority. He gives us the authority to take... What was he saying to him? What do you, I think he was saying to him is, yeah, you see all these waves and water? Why didn't you do something about it? I gave you that authority. I gave you that power. Where is your faith? So what kind of situations do, do we face today? Because we're not in boats usually. We're not going across the lake with Jesus. Well, that would be cool. So what kind of trials and situations are we facing? It kind of might make, kind of feel overwhelming in our eyes. How about broken relationships? And here's a big one. Busy lifestyles. How about the delay in God's promises? You, anybody kind of feel discouraged on that? Or emotional problems? Or maybe there's some fam- family problems there. You know, your children, your anybody in your family. And here's one I hear a lot, and I feel a lot, especially right now in this economy, is financial problems. Are they overwhelming you? Are marital problems? Or as you can hear in my voice today, the sickness, the health problems, maybe even a death that's happened. Each one of those opens you up to disappointment. And heartache and difficulties. So where's your faith in those areas? If Jesus gave us that authority, because it says that when you become a child of God, when you accept Jesus, when you have faith in Jesus, it says all who believed, all who believe, it's not past tense, it's now. What do we believe in? That people can be healed? That these problems can be taken care of? No, we believe in Jesus. That's what he's talking about. It's not just believing that when I pray for somebody, they're going to be healed. It's believing that Jesus said that, that Jesus was the Son of God, is the Son of God. It's believing in Him. I'm getting off my notes again. <laughs> That's how we become overcomers. So John 16:33 said, "I've said these things to you that." In me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Getting extra notes here. Must be next. (laughs) Now the enemy. We've got an enemy. We're fighting that enemy. We're in the army of God. And we're fighting the enemy. Satan. He likes to exploit those things. The family problems, the financial problems, the sicknesses. And he's always scheming against us. And what's his goal? What is Satan's goal? You're a child of God, you're serving God, and what's his goal? What's he want to do to you? He wants to make you weary. He wants to tire you out and make you lose heart. And that's something I saw in the military, even in training. Because they made us hike a lot. We might have been military police, but we're still basic infantry guys. We just had a little badge or patch on us at the time. When you're out there and you're humping it, you know, you got that pack on your back, that big hump, you get tired. 
and you lose heart, you think, why am I doing this? I'm never getting it into this. I got five more years of this garbage. That's if I had six years. <laughs> yes, after the first year, that's how I was feeling. It's never going to end. I was losing heart. I was getting weary because I was getting worn out. That's what Satan tries to do to the saints. Because what what is he? What is his job? Is no better way to say it. He is there to lie, to destroy, and to kill. That's all he does. So when you hear Satan chipping at your at you, said you're never going to do it. You're you're getting tired. It's never going to end. He's a liar. That's all. He can't even tell the truth if he wanted to. So you just flick him off, tell him what a liar is. Yes, I picture him a little tiny Jiminy Cricket thing. <laughs> God says he beat him, so he's done. So let's look at Daniel 7.25. And he shall speak words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and shall think to change the times and the law. Hmm. And they shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and a half time. Doesn't that sound like what we're going through today? I look at our government and I think, what are they doing? What's it say right here in Daniel? She'll wear out the saints of the Most High and She'll think to change the times and the law. I don't know. I have a, a small firearms business, and I look at the firearms laws a lot, and they are changing them every day to disarm us. Why? I'll let you decide that. I have my own opinion. We can talk later. <laughs> I'm actually very opinionated on that. This says, what's it say? It says, we'll be given into the hands for a time, times and a half time. Not forever. You know, it, I think of the history of World War II and the Battle of the Bulge. And the enemy came out. It, he, Germany was kicking America's butt. Right? That's the only way to say it. They pushed them back. But what did America do? In the Battle of Bulge, they threw the cooks, the mechanics, everybody. They gave, everybody grabbed their guns and went onto the the line, went into the battle, and pushed it back and stopped the enemy. What are you doing? Are you grabbing your weapon, the Word of God, and fighting the enemy, pushing him back? Because he's pushing. Right now, he is really pushing. Why? Because he knows his time is almost up. Now, Daniel is talking about the Antichrist who's going to be released on the earth in the last days. I would say that the spirit of the Antichrist is already on the earth. It's already working against people of God. And it's got the same objectives. Lie, kill, and destroy. And he's trying to wear us out. I'm skipping a bunch here. That's why I've got to look at it a sec. <laughs> You know, when he's trying to wear us out, it's... What is Satan's goal? He's already lost. He wants a few saints to go and be with God as possible because he's jealous. So he doesn't want you to go to heaven. He doesn't want you to serve God. He wants to discourage you, 
make you tired, give you that disappointments in life, so that you'll just sit back and go, eh, doesn't matter what I do. How can it matter? Well, it does. Look what happened in the Battle of Bulge. It mattered that those guys got up from their cooking pots and their threw down their wrenches and went and fought. God wants us to fight. He doesn't want us to sit around. That's not what he told us to do at all. He said, go out, preach the gospel, and these things will follow you. The signs, the wonders, the miracles. So in 2 Corinthians 2.11, it says, So that we would not be overwhelmed by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. So, how are we going to do that? When we look at all those different things there, Let's look at Luke uh, 4.13. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until opportune time. So Satan's, he's looking at our weaknesses and he, he likes using those against us, just like he did Jesus in the wilderness. But then he had to take off because he was beat because what did Jesus do? He used the word. So those areas we talked about earlier, they keep getting discouraged in. The family problems, the financial problems, the sicknesses, all those things around you. Do you feel a risk in those areas? How are you going to fight them? you feel like maybe you're getting over your head in water in the boat? And it's just the storm's raging around you? It's just kicking just kicking your butt are you guys ready to drown in those sorrows and disappointments what we need to do is we need to identify where we're vulnerable the things that Satan can get to we got to identify him to ourselves we got to ask God okay God what do I need to get Where's my weaknesses? Now what do you do about them? We get in the Word of God. And what's the Word of God say in Ephesians? Let's look at Ephesians 6, 13 through 16. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, important, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, which, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. You gotta understand that Satan is an unrelenting enemy. He's not gonna stop. So get your shield of faith. And where does that faith come from? Jesus. You know, I, I don't know if I told you guys, but I was on the the SWAT team for a short time. A very short time. I was a little older than most of them. And it wore me out. <laughs> but one of the things we had was a shield, a ballistic shield that would stop the darts. They were lead, but they were darts. And if we didn't take that with, I mean, we had on our body armor, our ballistic vest, but what about the, your legs, your head, and your arm? That shield, the same as here. What did that shield stop? Back in Jesus' time, they would shoot arrows that were on fire, darts, from all their stuff. And if you didn't, yeah, you could have on your leather 
ballistic vest. Those arrows would go right through it and they would burn. But the shield that they had, these shields, you could, if you look at the Romans when they did it, they could actually set up, they'd set up their shields in front and then some guys set them on top and on the sides. They were protected from every part. The enemy couldn't get to them. I always thought, give me a cannon, <laughs> some artillery, I'll go through those shields. But we got to get our shield of faith. Faith that Jesus gave us the power and authority to kick Satan's butt. So when the arrows come at you, put up your shield of faith, they'll bounce off of it. They won't get to you. In uh, 1 John 5, 4, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. In Hebrews 12, 2, it says, Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So where's our source of faith? Jesus. It says right there in the Word. And I don't know about you guys, but this is the Word of God. The living Word. Okay, I'm going to get off on a little tangent here. Every word is a frequency. There's a frequency in sound. Did you know that everything has a frequency? The rocks, the paper in the word, the wood, well, this isn't real wood. Whatever this is made of has a frequency. Probably glue, mainly. But it has a frequency. It vibrates. When God spoke his word, there is a frequency. Do you know that sound never stops? It just keeps going and going and going. So God's word, he spoke it. He spoke it and gave it to us. It's living. It's still alive. It hasn't stopped. That's a freebie. It's not in my notes. It's something God showed me one time. I'm a ham radio operator and kind of study on frequencies a little bit and some other things. And you know, in the military, even they teach you about frequency because if everybody stays in step when you're marching across the bridge, the frequency of the steps can actually destroy the bridge because it resonates with it. Well, God's word has got a frequency that resonates with your heart, with your soul. Okay, on to the paid stuff. Oh, wait, I don't get paid. <laughs> That's okay, because God paid them. I'm skipping a bunch. <laughs> you know... Do you feel like, I know I feel like it sometimes that I'm alone. I'm the only one that gets tired. I look at Pastor Nick and go, man, that guy just keeps going. He just never stops. If you don't believe me, look at my text messages. <laughs> at five in the morning. I don't, I'm not up at five, Nick. <laughs> Not normally. Sometimes God wakes me up. But I lost my train of thought. My train's easily disrailed sometimes. I think my switches are messed up. <laughs> but uh, We look at some of the people in the Bible. Let's look at Moses. 
think Moses was a pretty strong warrior for God, wasn't he? He led all those millions of people, yes, there was millions, on a four-day trek that took how long? <laughs> Forty years? <laughs> it was a short trek. I don't know if it was four days. But he got so tired of them, he got so weary and discouraged that Moses said, God, just kill me and get it over with. It's in uh, Numbers 11, 11 through 15, if you don't believe me. But what did he do? He took that to God, said, God, this is how I'm feeling. And God gave him the strength and the guidance to go on. And then his helper, Joshua, he took the people over into the promised land and was fighting and fighting. And he got tired and weary of the fight. He said, God, can't I just go back to the wilderness where there's not as many enemies? But he went back to the source of his faith. And he got told what to do and how to overcome the enemy. And look where we are now. He's one of the, Joshua's one of the strongest warriors I know of. That's in Joshua 7.7 7 there, Pastor Nick. He's looking at me like, what? <laughs> so we not only have a shield of faith to protect us, we've got other stuff. When we looked at Ephesians, it said we had the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, why do you think that helmet is first? Why do you think it covers your brain, your ears, protection for your eyes? The only thing he forgot is our mouths. <laughs> I don't think he forgot. But. I'm going through them. Make sure. Helmet, breastplate, belt of truth, Shield of faith, shoes of peace. Oh, almost forgot the, the offensive weapon and defensive. The sword of the word. That's actually, if we didn't have that, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> so let's, I'm going to. I'm going to skip down to Romans there, Adam. Romans 10, 17. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. So when your faith runs low or gets weak or, I don't know, you just forgot. Where do you get more faith? The word of God. Get back to the word. When you feel weary, when you feel like you're losing all your faith, get back to the Word. Well, I guess those are Nick's notes. So I'm going to conclude it, even though I got like two more pages there. <laughs> We've got to find contentment in that that shield of faith. We got to be able to stand behind that shield and be content, be satisfied, be confident that it's going to stop the enemy's barbs, the enemy's darts arrows, whatever you want to call them, bullets. We got to get back there and be confident, be content. In Philippians 4.19, sorry Adam, 
And my God will supply every need of yours according to the riches, his riches and glory in Jesus Christ. So God has promised us something. He's going to give it all to us. He's going to supply everything we need. Not that we want what we need. That kind of what, well, what we used to tell our kids, we don't care what they want, we're going to give them what they need. Sometimes that's discipline. but That's a different subject. So that's, that's kind of some of the basic steps. Going back to the basics of what to do when life throws its disappointments and discouragements at you. Get back behind your shield of faith. Get back to the basics. Put on your armor of God. I say put it on every morning when you wake up. I mean, I kind of, every morning, I'm, she doesn't see me all the time. I, kinda, <laughs> I put on my helmet. As I'm putting on my shirt, I'm saying, God, put on my breastplate of righteousness, my belt of truth. My, I don't always put on my shoes, but my socks. Yes, I stay in the house all day sometimes. <laughs> don't listen to her. <laughs> Wives. <laughs> They're there. They're to keep you straight, too. But I go through it in my mind and get that shield and that sword. And sometimes I might set them down during the day, but I've, I try to remember to pick them back up. So that's, we need to do that every day because the enemy doesn't stop. He comes at you every day, every second, because that's who he is. He's a liar, a cheat, a destroyer, a murderer. That's all he does. So I'm going to end it, this with Galatians 6, 9. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season, we will reap if we, if, there's an if there. If means you got to do, the, to get those other, you got to do this. If you don't give up. So, I want to encourage you, don't give up. When the life's disappointments, discouragements, hardships, when things happen in the world around us, that we just don't understand, or we think, how can you do this, God? How can... God's not doing it. How can you let it happen, God? Put on your armor. Get your shield of faith up. Say, God, show me what I'm supposed to be doing in this. Heavenly Father, right now, just bless each one of us with that knowledge that you've given us. And God, help us to remember in those hard times that you're still there and you didn't leave us. We may have looked away from you, but you didn't leave us. And God, bless everyone here with that. God, it strengthen our faith. God, show us in the Word, in your Word, the truth. God, just strengthen us now. And when we see those discouragements, help us to remember that through those, you're still at work and you're still the king. In Jesus' name, amen.